What's up, everybody? Israel here and Marcy. Where do you go now? Kane, Bressler, where are you going at? It's always going to be Bressler. Legally, it's now, Kane, there a reason but why... you know what? We go with Bressler. Is there a reason why it's Bressler? And can you also give your social security ATM code and number on YouTube right now? Uh, yes. Uh, social security number is number, 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 number. Did I tell you my security code for my house is 8675309? Really? That's the same number as my friend Jenny. <laughs> so, so today we wanted to test something out here of answering frequently asked questions by many of you out there in the metasphere of social media. <laughs> so... We have a lot of questions that came in and we wanted to kind of go through them in regards to alt space and metaverse and a lot of you that don't really understand some of the things that we're going to sort of answer today and this is why we have marcy the guru of alt space she is such a guru she's actually broken alt space <laughs> i've actually been kicked out of certain things because of you know so a I, I know of... a few worlds i can take you guys to so a couple of days ago, I noticed that your screen name changed. So let me ask you two questions. One, how can you change your screen name? And two, is it possible to change your username? I know those are two different questions, but can you answer those for us? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, changing your screen name. So I don't know if, uh, if Altspace can see this or anybody that's on Metalore. If you were to click on me, does it show my name as it comes up? Let's take a look. Okay, so I'm clicking on you, and obviously okay. it doesn't show up there, but... Okay, but it does show I believe he up. Can, yeah. He can, um, okay. let's see, he can click on you. Let's see. Take a look. Metalor. Okay, so let's see. So we're not able to click on that guy. Okay, that's cool. There we go. Okay, so I'm clicking on Mars. There it is. I see it. Okay, so before I was always Mars, and then I changed it just to Mars because everybody calls me Mars. So, okay. Well, it's very easy to actually change. This is your avatar name. Okay. So a lot of people, they want to know, well, how can I change that out? It's very simple. Uh, when you actually log into Altspace, hey, so when I'm you go into right the altvr.com, yeah, as we mm -hmm. can see behind us. Okay, got it. Go ahead and go to your profile. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you see where it says edit? Go ahead and go yep. to edit. And this right here will actually answer both those questions. Your display name, so your avatar name, okay? You can change that as many times as you want. It could be Advanced Networks 1, Advanced Networks 2, or just I'm always on the air. So whichever one. Now, that is your display name. That's the name that you're going to be going by. Now, your username, it even says right there, you're only allowed to alter your username just one time. So if you do change it again, that's the last time that you're able to change it. So whatever wow. you choose... Make sure that that is what you're going to be going with the rest of the time. The username now, is what you can use whenever, like, let's say you want to make me a moderator of your world, or you want, or I want to make you a moderator of the world. I'm going to need your username. So I would need that advanced networks name to be able to it. put that into my system. Let me, let me ask a question about your username. When I clicked on your user account, let me, let me do it again from the system. Is there a reason why you have an asterisk in front of your name? Uh, yes, that is actually. So when you look at your friends list, I will actually be at the top of your list because it goes by the, the symbols. It goes by then the numbers and then it goes alphabetically by what you go. So, okay, so for you, you so, would actually still be at the top because you start with A. But if you were to right, so have an asterisk and then that, or some sort of symbol or character, you would then be at the very top of any of your friends' list when they go to look for you. Okay, so example right now, I'm showing on the screen, um, just for the audience, I clicked on my settings right now on the triangle, 
they come up with friends online and advanced networks account only has a few but i do notice that you're the letter m but you're still above the letter i because you have the asterisk um up in front of your name so that can be done is there a reason why you need the parentheses or not really no i was just doing like a silly character looking thing and so i was just adding that in a lot of people do different ones uh, my friend Iceman, he actually has um, a different, like a couple of different characters, um, along with some of actually some of our mutual friends that we have. They usually do like certain characters in front of their name, and that way they right. can be at the top of the friendship list. So when people want to go and hang out with them, or they want to go and check out their worlds, they know that they can once they click on the friendship list. If they happen to be online, they're at the very top. Instead of us scrolling through the friendship list. That makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. Okay. So for those of you that were looking to change your names, thank you, Morris. That actually is very helpful. Very welcome. Okay. So um, same person asked another question and they were asking, why is it so hard linking setting up Altspace VR with my Hotmail email? Took one week. My friend is having the same problem. This, um, so if you know Mars or if you might not know, um, Hotmail is also ran by Microsoft. And you have to do the authentication when you log in to Altspace. Now, is that something you do, Mars, or do you avoid using Altspace? I mean, Microsoft's uh, login account. When I first started, um, I of course, I had to sign in through Microsoft no matter what. But now whenever I go into my Oculus, now that it's been, I guess, taken over by Metaverse, so by the Facebook accounts instead, um, it will ask me, do I want to log into my Microsoft? And I can always just say skip you know, and just skip that whole hassle because it is truly just whole hassle just to try and log in through Microsoft. Right. And I, it's because when Microsoft purchased Altspace, that's one of the things that they wanted to do for security. For me, I have two logins. I have an Altspace login. I also do have a Microsoft uh, account login. But there are so many times lately, like you stated, the user that asked the question um, was exactly that, was takes me 10 times to get in. And yeah, anytime there's an update to either Microsoft or to Altspace, that seems to be happening to a lot of people. Um, so just to give you guys an example, let me log back into here. You're going to notice on here on the screen that there are actually two logins. When you guys are talking about being locked out, it's because if you try to log in with the Altspace account, Microsoft did an update to Edge Browser, in any of the other Windows items that you guys have, you guys are going to have the problem, even if you tried putting in your information here. So the easiest way to fix that, and this is the easiest way, don't go into this screen first. What you want to do is you want to go to Microsoft's login. So um, you can do, like, i just give you guys an example. If I hit Microsoft here, it's going to go to login.microsoftonline.com. Now, for this example, I'm going to go to that page just to show you. So I'm just going to go log in at MicrosoftOnline.com. And what it's going to do is it's going to go to this screen. It auto logs me in because I already have it set to always remember. If I don't Thank have you. it set to always remember, then obviously, as you know, it's going to want you to type in the information. But one thing I did want to say, Mars, is you've seen it as well. It wants to send a security message to either your email or to your phone. Is that what's happened to you in the past? That's exactly what happens. Anytime that it's so I did exactly what you did. And just so you know, this is also a huge time saver. If do like an auto login, if you're gonna be doing a login in like what what is is doing right here, you wanna just do an auto login because otherwise I have like my email on my iPad. I also have then my phone. And so when it's like, okay, well, we sent a code to your email. So I have to then go to my iPad and I have to open it up and I have to click on it. And then it's like, oh, we also sent a code to your phone. So I have to go back to my phone and I have to 
click on that and verify that. And so that to me was just such a hassle. So I just did what you did where it was an automatic login. I just login, do a, yeah. an actual thumbprint security and that's how I log in. So for those, for those people that actually have that account, have that issue, start with your login, the Microsoft online account. And once you go in there, um, you want to go ahead and make those uh, additions. Obviously, this is the account I'm using. You want to go ahead and create, just like she said, the two-factor, which is going to be your text message, your phone, or it goes to an email. Do that first before you try to go into Altspace. This way in the future, as she stated, when you say your information, you're going automatically right into it. Uh, in this example, I'm actually in my 365 account and I'm going to go into my Microsoft account right here and make those changes. For this example, I don't want to do that because obviously it's going to go into my personal <laughs> information that we don't want to share on the screen. So, passwords, asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Right, exactly. So that's exactly what we want to share that, you know, with social security, passwords, et cetera. So that's <laughs> how you want to avoid those issues that people are having when it comes to uh, that as well. Definitely. All right. You want to um, you want to ask that next question by Lorenz Small. It, so Lorenz Small asked, "Why a projector and not a full blown web browser for AltSpace?" That is a great question. The difference between a projector and a full blown browser for AltSpace is going to be this. The projector, let me see if I could actually bring it up to show you guys. I'm going to actually go into my screen here and we'll see if we can show it to you. Okay, let me let me bombastic this thing. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Hi. Make it small. Okay. All right, so here, let me twist it the right way. This out of the way so I can see. So right behind us is the projector. Now, you're going to notice that the projector has a top menu, and it doesn't give you a full-blown web page, as we're seeing on the screen behind us. If I was to put this up here, you're always going to have that top bar, and you don't want to see that. The projector should really just be your controller to turn on and turn off your projector in alt space. This is your controller. So for Marcy and myself, we're working together on here. This projector can actually go on our desktop. We can activate and deactivate the screen anytime we don't want to see it. So uh, that's something that we use it for. So use it like a, like a remote control for your television. Now, your full-blown projector is going to be what's behind us. This is what you want to have in a nightclub, in a seminar, or something. And this is why we're using full-blown web browser for all space versus a projector, which is what we call this right here. This is a projector. And then the mirror, as they call them, is the full-blown browser on the bottom. Oh, another question that you guys might ask in that, can I project only a web page versus the whole desktop? When you project with Altspace browser with Edge is the only one that actually works on Microsoft, not on a Mac at this time. What you're going to do is you're going to select full desktop versus a browser page. You're going to see the entire desktop. So if Marcy and I are working on a project where we have to show our computer, or show the entire computer. Right now, I'm only showing this screen so I can work behind the scenes on the same computer, and you're not seeing my mouse move around, only seeing what I want to show you. Perfect. And a lot of world builders actually do, they do this where like they will stream YouTube for their world so people can listen to music or like what we did the other day in the Los Angeles one where we just watched music videos like that whole time. So, Right, exactly. There was a reason why I brought it back up. It was because uh, as soon as I turned it off, the screen behind us went offline. <laughs> So I'm just going to move that out of the way. So it's behind that guy. So right there. This window out of the way. Okay, cool. Um, oh, this is a good one for you, Mars. Um, how do people get all the different clothes per Tabitha? 
Okay. Um, so as you can see, as you can see, like Iz and I, we actually have different clothes. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm just wearing a blouse and I'm wearing pants. Uh, he's got like the sweater and the jacket going on. Now, when you go onto your avatar, so if you actually, um, I think I, I don't bring know it up. if you can do that from here. Yeah, I was going to say if you can bring that up here, you'll see that you um, can actually get. Go ahead. Yeah. So basically, what we're going to do is we're going to make cameraman change outfits. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my menu so you guys can see it on the screen and there's the screen. I'm going to hit on me. You're not going to be able to see it, Mars, because it's on the user. Right. right, now. right. Um, I'm going to hit me, and I'm going to customize my avatar. And when I customize my avatar, I've got a couple of different things we can do. We can do body, head, face, and clothing. When you go into these sub-menus, if I go into the body, you can do skin tone, body shape, and nail polish. Because you know me, Mars, I'm always about the nail polish. Right, right. Um, and then with like... the head, I, I can do exactly hair, hair dye, hat, hat accent, and jaw type. So if I go to hat right now and add a cowboy hat, my character now is going to have a cowboy hat. I think the question that she was also asking, or the user was asking, was right. how do we get custom clothing? So um, how would we when... go about, Mars, about changing custom clothing? So custom clothing, it actually depends on who you go with, because we actually have a few creators in alt space. We now have Swifty. We now have Max. We now have the very first one that you and I met was Ryu and or Rayu. I, I actually can't remember how to pronounce his name, but he actually customized special clothing for each one of us. And that way we, you know, we're, they actually put like a body on you it's for a female, put like an actual body on you or give you like anything that you are requesting certain things. Um, I don't know if you're able to change out yours to the one that Max made for you. If you're able and then that way we can actually see. I don't know if you're able to I do that so. one or not, but. Yeah, let me uh, let me so, add the Maximus thing. I keep talking. So with those ones, those people that do their creations and they act, you actually do pay a price for it. So, and everyone is a different price for each thing. You just let them know, you let them know what you want. You maybe give them design of what you're wanting and you can either Venmo cash app or however they do it, the PayPal money. And they then create your clothing for you. So, us right here, we do have a limit amount of just avatar clean and, co and colors and stuff like that. Whereas if you go with one of the creators that we were talking about, they can make specific you what you're actually wanting. So, so that's one of the things I did, of... Mars. Oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. No, that's one of the things I did. Say, go ahead. Uh, so um, as she stated, one of the creators. Um, See, as we call him, Maximus. Um, he created a few things for free. So one of the things you like to do is definitely um, enter their MREs into your world. This is how we're able to do it. So behind us, you're going to see different designs, as you can see, Mars, of items that are free that you can also get as eyes and items. Now, for me, for myself, or Mars is changing into some outfits on that one, is I'm going to click on... I'm going to enable my clothing of something that he made uh, for me special. It's going to be, as you can see here, it's going to be the full outfit uh, that I do for DJing, uh, which is a, you know, a full sheet. Let me actually get in front of the screen over here. And you can see, and if I turn around, you can see it says it's radio behind me. So one of the outfits that he customized for me was this, like a DJ this is my portal that I can actually have so I can change outfits on the fly. I can go back to my regular outfit. I could change to something that he's made for me. I could just turn this completely off. I'd be part of that outfit. Yeah. 
I'm just showing the one that I just changed into. So Max is actually one of our friends, and he he does these these creations right here, free ones that um, you'll notice where he had put up a sign Max. You can click on that, and these are free ones that you can put into any one of your worlds, and that way people who come in to visit can actually try them on themselves. You can see I'm wearing now the t-shirt. So one of the things that you guys will also notice is these clothing types, the designers are giving free, as they call it, MREs that are plugins for different worlds. If I was to put this MRE into Marcy's world, she would be able to add these items for free. But again, it's a limited amount of what we are allowed to have. For example, you know, me wearing something that <laughs> is having to from Max here, you know, the girl's dress. <laughs> um, no. But you will notice that my outfit is bleeding in on that because I have not removed the outfit. And that is one of the things that Max will always tell you is if you're going to wear his outfit, you should change your default clothing to as basic as possible so you can actually then change into something that's going to fit. So I'm going to bleed into the other one. Because as you can see, my outfit right now currently bleeding both, into three yeah, types of Yeah, they're both bleeding through. Actually, it's matching in color though, right? <laughs> yeah. She is. So. With mine, you can see the top of it is, is working out just fine. It's the bottom portion that you can see where my blouse is actually leading through with my pants. So looks like I'm wearing like a shush I see bathing it. Okay. suit. Yeah. Yeah. Now I can't take the clothes off. <laughs> I know. It's like we forgot the X portion that we can take we got the, the clothes X off. Portion so of it. Exactly. You'll just, so you'll just be a very, very fancy dress. <laughs> Let me ask you, Mars, what would be one of the reasons for Everybody do pay money, which is I'm assuming what they do, right? They pay money for an actual outfit. Yes. Well, they make so many different designs that, I mean, why not? That's that's their creation, and sometimes the whole purpose of them in money is so that nobody else can actually take that idea, and nobody can copy that idea. And so, but I mean. From what I hear, I know the the first one that we had met, uh, Ryu, when we met him, I mean, he had, when we went into his mansion, it actually showed a list of all the people that he's going to be working with. Um, I do know that he actually does work with certain celebrities, like celebrities that come into alt space and they want specific um, avatars or they want specific, you know, clothing and stuff. And then that's when... You know, he charges them and they walk around and we'll just have like whatever avatar. We have ones that walk around looking like Supergirl. We have ones walking around looking like the Joker. Um, ones looking like Aquaman. I mean, it is it's actually pretty amazing on how many things people have created for them. So and here we have our... to the same realm that we talked about the um, the MREs. Um, when an MRE is brought into alt space, into a world, again, a plugin to allow animated things to happen, it's as we decide, you know, we brought on here, um, C, right? Is that the right name, MC? Uh, One with the wings. Which one are we talking about? Uh, when we visited MC to to have these wings oh, yes. for us. Yes. Real MC, that was his name, the real MC. The real MC, yes. In regards to something like this, this is exactly the same as clothing. This MRE allows us to wear things, as you can see here, um, across a party. If you're throwing an event, maybe you're having a costume party and things like that, this is something that you can wear and change into many times over and be able to, again, sprucey enough to have that. And in the same realm that we're talking about MREs, so put in a bar in front of us that was again created by another user where you can actually act a drink and <laughs> look like you're drinking them. Oh, here's, here's the fun part about this one with the bar, okay? So, you notice know, it's got the bottle one, okay? 
So if you were to get the beer one, and let's just say I decide to get at the fruity drink because it's actually my type of drink anyway, fruity drink. Notice that there's actually a sign over here by is that says, notice beverages may cause vomiting. If you click on that and you hit agree and a few drinks, what is with that bottle, he will actually start to throw up green clovers. He, I just have, I'll just have like vomit come out. And it's pretty hilarious. I mean, you know, some people like to do this on purpose just to see what actually does come up and everything. But when you do the acting of your drinking or your, I mean, that all of a sudden you'll be talking to somebody and all of a sudden just vomit starts to spew and it's it's actually quite hilarious you know some people they just have the drinks in here as if it's you know what's well, good conversation holder if i'm just having my drink right here talking to people it's funny i just realized that and this all... actually says metaverse has campground yeah. on the on the actual label <laughs> that is pretty awesome <laughs> the one who created that one <laughs> you just go so cheers cool. <laughs> now is there is there like a limit how many drinks you can hold on your hands um actually no i believe if you actually start if you turn on the left hand for instance i'm a right hander person so i have my right hand on um and you want to use controls for both hands and there's going to be times when you go into certain worlds where you play games and they are required to have both hands working and that's where you can change that in your settings but if you had that, you have one in one hand and then one in the other. Like the same thing with your um, your clubs where you have the glow sticks. You can also turn on your left hand and just use that for both and right hands for your glow sticks. In this, Mars? Um, so Max and the little handle that I have in my hand, Max did his own. Look at this. Oh, wow. Check this out. If you're drinking it, you hear it gulping. Oh my goodness, you can hear that. Wow. It's okay, going down. See, that's just, and that's next level right there. Look at that. Not next level, yeah. yeah this is cool. Um, you could get really drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody already drank all the rest of that one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is that like, yeah, but you look that's at like the tequila bottles. So, wonder if here, let's try this. See here, it'll work with with me. So it looks like it's just okay. it's just working with just yeah. the user. Yeah, okay, I got it. Cool. Mm. Um, another neat thing about MR since we're talking about now, can you explain Mars um, what an MRE does. It, I'm so sorry, I didn't hear what about so MREs. The, in the discussion of the MREs, what, what do MREs do? You would think that MREs are a lot of the, say, yeah, just like a lot of, a lot of materials that you can actually interact with. That's what I would think. I mean, it's just... exactly. That's exactly what they are. MREs are the interactive the realm experience where you're able to manipulate things um, and really be able to, like this bottle, this bottle swishing water, MRE, it's a programmable code instead of like my static microphone that I have here. I can't grab the microphone. If I animate an MRE, I'm able to do swishing of the water. You know, I have a pet that actually just dropped on the ground. As you can see, he's running around somewhere, right? There he is, a little kitty cat underneath me. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I just saw that. The little kitty cat. Yeah, he's actually yeah. Just running around. Those are like, the ones that you had over put at, him on uh, the bed. Yeah, uh, at Emily's World. The Easter World, exactly. Yeah. That was um, so much oh, fun. Ask you a question, Mars. Been in alt space how long? Um, 
want to say the first. Let's see here. I apologize. Somebody just wrote me right now. Um, I want to say I've been on for about maybe five months or so. To show how long you and I have been friends, because then it will... Okay, friends for four months. Oh, so, okay. So I guess I've been on here for four months. For you now, and when you first started, does this still feel exciting? It's still always exciting. I know that I don't get to come on as often now, as like beforehand when like everybody was able to be on here and and to be honest, like once they opened up, like once COVID settled down, there's not as many people on alt space anymore. But I still find it exciting. I come on at least once or twice out of the week, and I will check out maybe new worlds that friends have created. Well, um, usually if there's like an event that comes on, one of my friends, uh, Daisy Shaw, she's actually one of the biggest leaders in alt space. Um. And she throws a concert every Tuesday, her castle. And so, and I, it's so weird when you mention castles and mansions and stuff. These are the actual worlds that people create for you. So every Tuesday, this last Tuesday, she actually did. Um, my goodness, I'm totally blanking. Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Sorry about that. I totally forgot. But yeah, this last Tuesday was Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers that she had the full concert going. So. There's a whole bunch of people there. You can actually, the MREs that she has are guitars. So that way you can actually be playing the guitar while the concert's going. It's just so much fun. But do come on at least four times of the week just because I want to see what else is new, what's going on. I'm usually the card player. I like playing uh, anybody who likes to play the game Cards Against Humanity. They actually have a game in here and it's called programs against humanity and it's supposed to be the space version but it's exactly cards against humanity and it's so much fun to play you get to meet new people um they all have a great sense of humor and just amazing i really love this place so much one of one of the things that i was going to mention marcin since you've been here for a while got to meet people not only in your area but around the globe and you really got to experience other cultures and everything within a virtual space that really brings i guess the word is unity right it brings unity to doing here in a global scale that's exactly you said it on point it's we are truly united you can go to the campfire right now I have friends now, like actual friends that some are from Australia, others are from the UK. Um, I have a couple of friends that are actually over in Canada. And one of my friends that was actually in Canada, he just moved over to Florida. And I'm I'm still friends with him. Like whenever he comes on, I'm just like, hey, dude, like, let's go hang out. Let's go watch a movie together. And it's like, yeah, let's go hang out. Let's do that. Um. It's great because, I mean, also like with you, you're over in Los Angeles. I'm over in Central California. And even though we're four hours away, it's like I get to hang out with you in person right here. So it's right, exactly. so great. I love it. The things I was showing while, you're, um, while you were talking is I was opening up the events on, um, uh, on the screen, uh, showing the audience the difference between um, events and popular worlds. In the example right now, Ryu's mansion is popular, and you've got Elysium, a popular, and you've got karaoke in the trees for people that like karaoke. Um, and then you've got a couple of events that people are doing. There's some dangerous caves, another one that Marcy likes to go to, and um, <laughs> and the complex 3D theater. Which, hey, um, you want to talk about the complex 3D theater for a second and those movie oh theaters that you go to? Yeah, there's actually there's actually two theaters that I highly recommend. Okay, um, for instance, me and DJ Kitten, your daughter, favorite is the Complex Cinema, the three D Complex Cinema, the one that you just mentioned right now. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys can see that. Other theater that's going to be very famous on there or very popular is going to be Duke's three D Cinema. Those are the two that are just 
the highest when it comes down to that. You can do, and maybe one of these days we can actually do an actual tutorial of it. Um, you get to go in, you get to choose a movie that you want to watch. And the way the complex cinema has it set up is she actually has rows of movies. And you click a number of which movie you want to You go to it, and then next thing you know, you can choose the theater that you want to go into. You can either go into a small theater, theater, you watch your movie. Now, the best part is this. Let's say Iz and I decide to go to the movies. Say I want to watch um, Titanic, because that's actually one of the movies that's in there. Let's say I want to watch Titanic, want to watch The Martian. We can both still be in the theater. He can be watching The Martian. I can be watching Titanic. You can still be watching different movies the same exact time. So yeah, the complex cinema TV. And they have upgraded so much. Now, the best part about Duke's 3D cinema, okay, he has it set up the same exact way where anybody can be watching a different movie all at the same time, okay? However, let's say Iz is in there and he's watching the new Independence Day movie. Right behind him, it will tell us what movie he's watching and it will say join. So if I then clicked on join behind his back, I then get to sit there and I get to watch the same movie with him and I am at the same exact scenes with him. That way we can actually watch then a movie together and like hang out and actually watch a movie together. So that is pretty are just amazing. amazing. Yeah, it's really cool. I really do love both of these places. Um, I think the reason why so many people love the complex one is because it's just a so much bigger variety of music, not music, I'm sorry, but movies. And then with Duke's 3D, he has a good variety of movies. It's more enjoyable because he has it set up where anybody who creates a world, so you have your cinema world, he can actually use his movies in your world now. And you would just contact wow. him, contact Duke. You can say, you know what? I have my own movie theater. I use your movies. What you would do is you would go to Duke's. You would choose your movie. And I would head over to your movie theater. And we could then watch our movie. So, that is cool. That's how, yeah, that's how amazing it actually works. But it's great. Because, I mean, there's times that. I, and if you've seen it, I think you have shown your movie theater before. It looks like a movie theater. It really feels like you're in an actual movie theater. And best part is you could be laying in your bed and you're just watching whatever movie you decided to watch that day. It is fantastic. That's awesome. I mean, that, and I, I know it's like I, we, you know, I, I've seen like when you're online, I see you're in a, in a I'm assuming it's because, you know, it's a movie you're wanting to watch. But it's cool when you see your friends list, you see like 17 people are watching dukes you know because they're a movie but i really like that you stated that everybody could be watching a different movie but be sitting in the same theater next to each other you're just getting a different experience friends are still together hanging out exactly exactly now, and i know this is probably like an illegal question but you found any theaters that are playing releases that are not haven't been released uh, to television or to like Amazon Prime or anything like that are not really. um no unless somebody does it unless somebody does uh an actual stream privately so a lot of like Duke and the Complex Cinema when both of them actually went through the actual legal actions to be able to play those movies that way, everybody can enjoy it without any issues. However, um, let's just say that you want to watch, or let's say that you happen to stream another movie or something that's out yet. Um, you go to your theater and we can stream that. You just have to be careful because if somebody else goes in and they're watching it also and they're just like, wait a minute, how did this happen? You know, somebody could get into trouble, but it would. Pretty much just be a hey, you know, slap on the hand. You you're not supposed to be streaming that movie and stuff. It's possible because to do. They're it. obviously it's still just... having like copyright issues. 
to right, exactly. YouTube and everything exactly. else. Right. Okay. Exactly. Now, in some of these things that I have in the background, have you visited like uh, Metaveo Park and Titanic and places like that? Yes, I have. I've actually think thing that has like more than two or three people. I usually will always Titanic one. Um, I think it's actually being built because when I went in there this last time, it's the actual Titanic ship. But you can actually walk around the whole ship and everything. I don't know if they've added on some other things. Um, Daisy's Pirate Cove. That's actually my new favorite one. And I mentioned Daisy before. She's actually one of the world creators here. Uh, she does she does ones like um, it's called Climb If You Dare. That was the one where Emily and I went in and you have a timer and everything and you have to climb to the very top. If you are scared of heights, I know this is so silly because most of the time you're just sitting down and you're doing this. But you look down and it's like it's like a whole city underneath you and it is kind of scary. You're just like, oh my goodness, like you still scream if you all of a sudden fall, but you're oh, I'm just sitting down. It's okay, you know. But anyway, um Daisy's Pirate Cove, it's actually a treasure hunt there. And it is so great. I got to go there the other day and I actually did take Emily and she really liked it. And they gave you a list of things to find. And you go throughout that whole pirate cove and you're trying to find the treasure. And even have like pirate song that's, you know, it's really famous on TikTok and everything. They even have the lyrics to that song. So if you wanted to sing along with it, it's really cool. I like that place. You've, you've been to the solar system because I know that's really popular, correct? Yes. Um, solar system is actually another one of my friends. He's actually from Germany. His name is Nico. And he created Solar System and Beyond. That is one of the most popular places. And you can see that's his avatar right there. Um, this is actually one of my favorite. And I mean one of my favorite places. Because he really puts in full details into this. I always thought that this is the most perfect place to take maybe younger kids. They were wanting to learn about the solar system, even grown-ups. He has it where there's a whole section that, of course, has all of our planets in line in order of how it's supposed to go. And then he even has another section that you can click into where it then shows all the other different stars that we have you know, outside our universe and that, you know, that they have caught. And he, like I said, he puts so much detail into all of this. And you truly feel like you are in space. I mean, you've been there before uh, with us. You can see just amazing, amazing detail that he does. Yeah. Definitely genius. Um, as you were mentioning, such a popular place, because if you look at how many people have joined it, there's over 15,000 people yes. have joined the world, and 2,100 people have favored it. That's part of their favorites, meaning can get to your favorites and something that you can always go back and visit over and over. As a matter of fact, I believe I think Radio has a lot of favorites, but let me go click on it. Uh, I, with my cameraman, I only have a few that I favored, um, which is just a couple of them. But I agree with what you're saying. Is a lot of these worlds that are created by, like, say, Nico or other people like that, um, there's so much detail and people visit them because there's so much to do and so much to see. And, you know, it's like all of America, you can't get through it in one day because it's just so many things. That's exactly it. And we have, like, um, for instance, some of the best world creators, there's, of course, AZ, there's, um, there's Darren, Nico, he's one of them. The one that you have not been to yet, but it's also one of Emily's favorites, it's called Earthquake. And how he did this is so funny. You actually go in and you're like in just a regular room. It looks like it's like actually a casino. You're in a regular room. And then they actually simulate an actual earthquake. So with your headset on, it is vibrating and all of a sudden... 
The ceiling collapses. You fall. Everybody falls. You then see helicopters coming, searching for you. It <laughs> is so crazy how far this guy has. I want to say his name is Maddie. He does. He's also the one oh, that Maddie does Maddie who other... did that. I know yeah. Maddie. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Maddie did Earthquake Win. And he also does our favorite, uh, Emily and I's favorite one, our, our, our Toiki Drop, you know? So I love Toiki Drop. That's the, so awesome. the turkey game where it's the, the Maddie's Ox Drop. So. Maddie Boy, yeah. A Maddie Boy. Exactly. He's Maddie Boy, yeah. He does a lot. I got to say, I love oh, his yeah. worlds because, yes. I love his worlds because he does so many interaction stuff where you get to actually play, you get to actually move around and and do a lot of fun things. And oh, I'm, yeah. I'm just I love that. You seen he's got a Pac-Man world? I didn't even notice he had a Pac-Man world. Yes, that's so cool. Big city, yeah. This guy's awesome. I mean, he's done amazing. Yeah, he actually has yeah. like this one hub world. And when you click on it, you're actually in like a ship that moves you over to an elevator door, which then opens up to his hub world. Um, a hub world Can you explain is explain what a hub world. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. Can you explain so what a hub world. Hub world is. Hub world is you will have links to all of these worlds. So, um, for instance, my hub world. I don't know if you've been to that one or not yet. When you click on your favorites, it will have you have to go through all of your favorites, okay? And if you've been here four months like I have, you have a lot of favorites. That's the earthquake one right there. Yeah, I see it. It's just, yeah, <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> so That's awesome. A club earthquake. So if you have a lot of favorites on your list, you have to click and click and click. And of course, it's always in alphabetical order, okay? Let's just say that you want to go to the Star Wars world. It's going to be in S's, which is going to be near the very last pages of you going there. If I want to go visit the Simpson world, I have to go all the way to S's. And so you're clicking and clicking and clicking through. But then there's people like me who ended up, I was so tired of having to do that. So I just made my hub world my favorites. I go in there. When I go in, it has all of the portals to all of my favorites and I have the portals and I have the names right there. So, um, like if, if Emily is on with me and she knows like, let's go to Marcy's favorites. So we go to Marcy's favorites. We will then go to like, okay, so which one do you want to go to and have all of your clubs on there? I have all of Oliver Ronan's places. I have, I have a section that just has the movie theaters. So you can organize it how you want to, and I have it all in sections. And then I have my Emily section, which is friendly, where we can go and play and, you know, just enjoy a, a whole bunch of fun together. And what you do is you just click on a portal and you go to it. Instead of having to go down the list of your favorites, constantly going down the list of your favorites, you just click on a portal and you're there. That's it. It's so much one of the things I'm showing on the on the menu when you're hitting your menu list right now I'm seeing what's popular and featured and favorites in my world but we don't have a search function in our actual oculus like what Marcy and I are currently using so I I can search for friends I can search for that but I cannot search worlds or events so if there's millions of worlds out there to find an event or a world if it's not published or if it's just something that's neat on a haystack it takes forever to find for example in my world i have 18 different pages a lot of these are not even my worlds for i signed up for just to get to my page that i'm trying to work out of right now with marcy here in our studio is i gotta go to page almost 11 or 12 just to get to that i like said if you had a hub world then you're able to have it directly in front of you and get to it extremely quickly. Right. So question is, here's a question. How do we add a hub a teleporter to a world? Well, the easiest thing on space going to be, and I'm going to do it on the screen so you guys can see it because I just realized I'm doing it internally. 
Um, you're going to hit your triangle. Actually, let me go back. You're the world editor of your world. You're going to hit on your little world editor. And then once you go into it there, then you're going to hit on your tutorial panel, which is what's coming up on the screen for everybody. Exactly. Um, and we're going to go into um, alt space and basics. And then the second one on the screen is called the teleporter. So when you click on teleporter, I'm going to actually do a, my other one. Uh, I'm going to click on one that's going to take us to Hollywood Hills Lala, which is the one that I've been out of. And it's actually, hopefully you don't get transported out of the way, Mars, because it's right underneath you. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, it just asked me, do I want to be transported over? I'm like, <laughs> no. uh, do I? Don't go backwards, don't do it. No. <laughs> anyway. Um, so so what we did is we created portal. Oops, I almost went into it myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, here's the portal. I can enlarge it. I can make it smaller. And then it's got the name, which again, I could do the same. I could shrink it down and all of that. When we talk about hubs, we don't talk about Bruno, just about hubs. Um, <laughs> We have this little dot, and as Marcy was stating, she has um, organized in her categories and alphabetically and all of that, then be able to click on it. So right now in here, which I, we're not going to do because I don't want to disappear from the, the feed, is if we click that little button, it automatically takes us to our Hollywood Hills, La La Land world that we've created that you know is in the theme of Los Angeles. But in order to do that, you have to click that button to go through portal as mentioned right and if it's it's big enough because they actually do that so just like what was happening right now where it was underneath me you can actually if you don't want to click on it if you just walked into it it will actually then ask you want to be transported over to you know this world and you just click no. yes or <laughs> cancel over, whichever yeah. one right <laughs> Exactly. There's been so many um, times because they have there's some people that have it like really huge round. <laughs> so if you happen just to accidentally walk over all of a sudden, there's ones where it doesn't ask you, it just transports you. And also you're just like, oops, like I didn't mean to go here, but that's where I went. So I'm gonna take uh actually a screen. Of here, there we go. We had a screen up on the main page that was kind of blocking our portal that I was just showing to people. Um, but I think they got the gist of it. Oh, so I know that it's, since this is a long video, uh, we also want to bring security into the mix because of things that happen. Adult space, Microsoft, and users feeling their safety is threatened in Metaverse. Have you ever felt you personally? your safety threatened in metaverse um not so much as my safety i would say that the only thing that happened one time and believe it or not people it is so easy to deal with that's a thing um i had some i was at a campfire and i was with friends and i had somebody coming up and they constantly kept on right now you have your bubble on so at the time we didn't have that option, I guess, or like it really wasn't a. Yeah. So, do you have your bubble on right now, or? Do you? Okay. I have my bubble on. Okay, so turn off your bubble. So what's what's the bubble? The bubble actually, I don't know if you guys can see this. So, if you have it, do you have it on right now or off? Yeah, you can, actually, I have mine on right now. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see this on the screen. I'm gonna go oh, and can. I'm gonna try and touch. Is his nose right here. You notice my hand disappears. You can't see it anymore. And that's because he has his bubble on. It's almost like a protection thing. Don't have mine on, so you can. He's putting his hand right through my face. <laughs> that's yeah. where the difference is of you lean. I guess you could say protected. So I did have somebody that was constantly like trying to, you know, play with my face and my. Was, and I was trying to talk to somebody and they kept on you know, doing all that stuff. So I just clicked on their head 
And right above them, they blocked them. What was it? So clicking on the user, yeah, we've got the, the block button on there, like you, like you mentioned. Um, and, you know, I can kick you out of the world because I'm a moderator. Now, but yeah, I can actually block the person, correct? Correct. So, I mean, if if it's just getting to the point where it's like, okay, this person's doing too much. Another great thing is, let's just say that, um, I think I've done this before, where if I'm concentrating on something, I breathe really heavy so you can hear my breathing it almost sounds like i'm snoring at times <laughs> yeah. so if you're there and like let's say you're trying to talk to somebody and you hear somebody right next to you going <laughs> you know just so loud you can actually click on them and you can also mute them that way you're not bothered by the sound you can just you know they mute you did i okay no you did not you did not Okay, um, there you go. So I was like, I accidentally muted you. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, turning on your personal bubble, um, it's a, right to the right of your triangles. You guys can see on the screen here, it's this little blue thing. Um, and as you can see, it's turned on for my avatar that's actually filming us as well. I push the button. It's going to say, hey, wait a minute. The space bubble is there to keep you safe. Turning off the bubble, allow others to touch you any part of your avatar body. Please keep on the bubble unless you want to trust the other users in the room. So you can either just to keep it on or turn it off. If I turn off my bubble, my avatar that's recording us, I then would be able to do, the, like she said, the touch. Like if I turn off the one I have here next to me, how can I come up to Mars and give her a hug, which I just crashed into my, <laughs> my monitor. <laughs> <laughs> But now you have a physical a closeness, proximity with each other here. So you can do the hair touch, right. mack around a little bit, you know, stuff. So <laughs> um, don't worry, no avatar was abused in this video. Uh, during, during the set, or like during what, what I like to do, this is my favorite thing, actually. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> funny um In the emojis. okay so so back to the safety that we were talking about um are there any other things you can tell them mars in regards to staying safe in the metaverse um i mean they have the bubble they have there's so many things that you can do to prevent anything bad happening to you. I believe there was actually a there's a woman that was trying to sue Altspace or was she trying to sue Microsoft I think it was. I think it was and, Microsoft, yeah. Yeah, so she was trying to sue Microsoft because she was saying that she got sexually assaulted in VR. And we were kind of sitting there thinking, well, how does that happen? Like yes, it and I are standing here right next to each other. We can't actually feel each other. This is all VR. So, I mean, if I reach out my hand, I'm just hitting my screen. I'm not actually touching it in any way. So, okay. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Yeah, so what I was trying to do is I was just trying to do the, show the uh, woman in the metaverse. Here she is. Okay, yeah. She's stating that she was groped in the metaverse. Breaking news. Yeah. So, what woman? sorry, this was just, I think she was just trying to find the easiest way to get money. And it's because of this that they now have it where any place you go into, especially here in alt space, any place you go into, they automatically put the bubble around you. I still don't understand how she got groped unless she was actually groping herself and actually doing that. But she states that somehow a group of people or a group of guys went around her and was doing this. So here's a security thing for you. It's really simple. Like I said, you can do this thing called take off your headset. Wait, how do you no do that again? I, that's hard. 
heard. <laughs> you take it off was, of your head? Right. You you know, this this Oculus set can be removed. So <laughs> And guess what? You're then back at home in your room, in your office, and you're no longer being groped. Okay. So it's it's just that simple. You know, if it's getting that bad, believe me, that's that's why I was like, unless she was actually doing that herself, I don't understand how she was getting groped. Right. I mean, the biggest thing is an annoyance when people are like trying to like, you know, touch at your face and they're being really rude about it and stuff. You have the options of either putting on, keeping your bubble on. So that way it does not happen. You can then block them. That's the other option of just clicking on them and blocking them. All of these options have been available the whole time. And worst case scenario, if, there's been times when it's like, I'm just at a place where I'm like, okay, I don't really want to hang out with any people here just find a, another world and I go over to that other world. I just leave the whole place. I even stay there yeah. and take the drama just leave. Simple. Take the drama to your mama. Exactly. Exactly. Yep. Okay. Uh, we had, I know we had a couple more questions and we kind of diverted to something a little different. Let me push this one out of the way. Um, one of the questions was, can this done on a Mac. Um, well, if you're meaning Metaverse or Altspace or anything like that, there is the availability of downloading the Altspace app to a Mac, but I will tell you like what you're seeing right now behind us, that's all being recorded through a third party PC. I got in front of me, my cameraman is on a PC recording us. He can see the projector, he can see Marcy and I, he can see all the animations, the speakers and everything else. On a Mac, you would not see the animated uh, fade in and out of the walls. You would not see the screen. It would look pink to you. And most likely, some of these artifacts, like speakers and probably the table, just be pink. Not be see it again. It's still beta. So if you're on a Mac, unless you have a uh, boot camp or anything like that that boots Windows into a Mac, you would not be able to get the full experience. And even so, even then, not getting the metaverse experience that Marcy and I are doing. Right now, we look 2D on the screen on YouTube here in our studio. But to her and I, we're 3D. I like I could see her earlobe. Right. I could see her nails painted. I could even see the shadows of her hands. She moves them around. Right. And when you are working through the computer, when you had asked earlier, like, how long I had actually been on Altspace, the first few weeks, I was just on my computer. And you... Is such a huge difference. That's I, all I got to say. It is a huge difference from huge. being on the computer to all of a sudden this is you're in a completely different world right now. That's mm -hmm. what this is. Here's a, here's a question from Marcy from Ken Peel. Ken Peel writes, great job. Right. What did you create this world with? Love what you have done to the place. Now, in creating Marcy, what are the differences between <laughs> worlds, universes, channels, and groups? Question, Ken, from Mars. Okay. Well, for me, um, I've created only two worlds right now. Uh, I've created my hub world, the one that we talked about. And then I created a Just for Laughs house of memes. Um, everyone who's been on my Facebook, anyone who's been on my Instagram, I'm all about the comedy. I'm all about making people laugh. So I made an art gallery that has all of my favorite memes that just are absolutely hilarious. Um, you can just go through there. You can read each one of them. And I'm actually in the process of creating a second one. It's going to be all of the memes that were submitted to me on Instagram. And that way they can... And there's my world right there. Uh, Welcome to Just for Laughs, House of Memes. So I'm going to be then creating a second one because a lot of people wanted to be um, like joining in and they wanted to give me their memes that they thought were really funny. And in that art gallery, I'm going to be putting up the memes along with the name of the person that uh, sent them to me. And that way they get recognition for you know, 
making us laugh, and it was great. As far as no, the is. difference between worlds, universes, channels, and groups, I would say that each one of them, each one that we go into, that is a different world. As far as groups, those uh, groups that you can join, those are the creators groups because each group has a kit that you can I believe you can get whenever you're creating your world and stuff. So I don't know. You you tell me is <laughs> like what would be no, no, like the you, channels. You actually and the... hit it dead on. You understand the difference. Like a universe is a group of worlds, just like a planet, right? Um, each of my worlds until the screen here that we have. If we go to worlds on mine and go to my worlds, you guys are going to see I have two universes, at least for the, for the advanced networks creation that we have on here. Mine has hundreds and hundreds of sub-worlds within universes. Here I have two. I have Joe Galindo's universe and I have AN Tech. AN Tech has a couple of worlds, has built a world that we're sitting in right now, which is the AN Tech offices. And the AN Tech offices also as well was a different one, sort of starting to work on something that was like a mirror of or Girls World. Again, it's another empty looking at universe from another creator. And you'll notice people have multi and multi and multi worlds within a universe. A universe for for just for reference could be category of space. For example, for me. I have a universe just for music, universe, you know, just for a, you know, meditation and awakening kind of stuff, and, you know, universes to play in and all of that good stuff. But, but you're right, Mars, in regards to groups, when we go into groups, these are ones that are created by editors like Marcy and myself, like creators. And what we do is we can then give you access to our groups have our kits that we've created. An example, Oliver Rone, known popular DJ in Spain, he actually has events and worlds and clubs and hubs that he's created. And this is a lot of the things that he's got. Like if you've never been to the DJ gallery, that's one to go on because he has on a beautiful historical DJ gallery. But as you can see he has multiple things. Now in regards to his group, you add a group on here via the web page, you're actually going to get kits, templates, and anything that he's sharing with you. Maybe he shared one of his spaces, worlds, if you will, headquarters, et cetera, uh, out for you to then take over and create as your own. Maybe he created a DJ turntable headphones that you can also share. If you join his group, you then have access those kits templates and all of those good things that he's putting out and then when we were talking about one of the further as we talked about groups once we've joined things like that then i kits see what people have shared with me as kits. And we, in the regards to oliver ronan it's alphabetical here you can actually see what he shared with us there's any under the letter o for oliver um, maybe his kit has to be a camera kit or fun stuff. You can then click on that. And each of these kits that people share with you will have all the images of the artifacts that are with you. Then you can use these in your worlds that you create and in your spaces to be really set as your entire thing. One of the things I'm going to leave to Mars to answer, what are skyboxes and why are they important? Uh, skyboxes are actual, exactly what it says, box of a sky. <laughs> um, a space will give you a certain amount of skyboxes, as you can actually see behind you. So let's say that you have, um, let's say you have a house with like a lot of windows and everything. You can choose a certain skybox in one of these ones. You will see like city one, clouds one, fire, dreamscape. If you want like that night time feeling at nighttime, you then can change it out. When you actually look out the windows here in the world, like for instance, I can see outside right now of the Is Radio Studios, 
And he's using the, I believe it's actually, I think you're using either Dreamscape or just Blue. I believe it's just Dreamscape on that one because of the cloud. Okay. Right. So, because I'm seeing, I'm seeing like the city that's built underneath. I can see just clouds and it's like a clear sky day. This can actually get quite confusing only because if you're in here for so long, and you're thinking it's daytime out here, and you're like, yeah, it's daytime. I, you know, the sun's right here and everything else. All of a sudden, you take off your headset, and it's 12 midnight. <laughs> it's all dark in your rooms. <laughs> it's, it's dangerous because you get confused. I will tell you that. But the skyboxes are different skies that you can choose your worlds that you create. Um, Correct. Yeah. That's what's neat because I, some of your worlds skyboxes that were custom made. They're really neat. Yes. Uh, some of the ones that you have, I. <laughs> yeah, one of um one of my one of the creators actually, um he actually lives in my hometown, and we happen to meet at the campfire, and he has Milky Way skybox, and he also has the Saturn skybox. So, the Milky Way one is actually very beautiful. I mean, it's. It's just so beautiful. So if you do have like a space setting, it's an excellent skybox to use. And the other one, it's one of Saturn, but it's kind of like the sun behind Saturn. So it's a shadow of Saturn. It's, it's still very beautiful, but the Milky Way one is still my favorite one. Correct. Yeah. I was trying to see if I could log in um, to my Patreon I wanted to show um, people, and you guys ask uh, where you can get a lot of these worlds and kits and all of that. These are all done by designers and creators of Metaverse and Alt Space and all of these things. Like that. They're all creator type people. So a lot of these things, um, a lot of these creators, if you will, have what's called a Patreon. A Patreon is a subscription service that you pay for and in regards to, and, the, and as you can see, Patreon is not just for uh, metaverse creators. It's for music creators and visual creators, game creators and journalists and things like that. Creators of all kinds. A lot of these, a lot of these creators do is they will want you to subscribe to their, as they call Patreon. Um, and when you do, you then have access to their entire creations. See, Marie happens to be one of those gals that is one of the top designers in Metaverse, has not only designed items for people like Marcy and I, but she's designed items for high-end celebrity and politicians and you, know, you name it. She's done it for everything. As you can see right here in hers, you want to support her you pay five bucks you don't get any templates You're just supporting her because you want to support the artist and it gets higher you want templates she'll sell you the templates or she'll give you the templates pay 15 dollars a month you just get no kits no kits are going to be like the things inside your house for example here a kit would be what you see on the walls the desk the microphones speakers those would be part of a kit that would be the actual building we are in I actually sign up for the VIP Patreon gives me everything under the sun. So just to give you an example, um, she is currently working on, obviously you can't see it because she is blocking it. She's actually working this month on cookware, anything for your kitchen, pots, pans. You know, if you're making pancakes and you want the little spatula that breaks when you fall on grease, uh, you can have that as well. <laughs> as he gets the joke. Um, and um, yeah. things like that, or the Cali Hills uh, La La Land that we showing you. He designed that house and finished it, and things like that. There are so many things that this creator does. She's worth every penny in regards to her designs. They are off the wall, best I've ever seen in the metaverse, and nobody can really compete with that um, in regards to her design. It's they are very unique and very expressive in detail. Definitely. And then when we're looking at MRE 
in uh, Luminati, right? Is that the same? Uh, Lu yeah. Luminati. Spell it right. I think I, I, think I spelled it wrong. <laughs> there it is. Um, Illuminati game. Now, Illuminati, obviously, is he's created so many amazing things as well. And mm. actually, I think I picked up a different one. Uh, his yeah. is Illuminati, Luminati. and then it's underscore official. Okay, so let me or Luminosity, one. whichever one. Luminosity. His name is Luminosity. Luminosity. Oops. City. I spelled it incorrectly, but I see Google's going to help me out for a minute. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Luminosity, if you're watching this video, I apologize. We literally pulled it up. He's like, I had it saved under, had it saved just under my, my name, right? Yeah, I had it saved under my log. Well, that it to the, to the comments um, in the description so you can actually have his actual link and all of that. But he does not only templates and kits, it's also doing MREs like a working pool table, a working television, working animated things that you can use in your worlds. And that's another amazing thing. And again, these are ones that you can find on Patreon and things like that. Well, um, one other question that I know, if I want to design my own house, would I do it? You would be using something called Unity. And you can actually buy Unity and kits. And it's in the asset store. And if you've never been here, Mars, I know this is out later. Assetstore.unity.com, which is actually where these templates are bought. Like when I created one of my worlds, um, this is where I went to get and buy things. Now, there are silly things like, you know me, Mars, I'm a fan of Tesla. Um, somebody can actually build you a Tesla, animated Tesla that you can actually sit in, play with a radio, move the steering wheel, tap on the brakes, things like that. They'll actually build you a Tesla, and they actually cost money. So I'm trying to right now here. You can buy a charging station for Tesla, $6, where you can actually have it in your world. Um, you can have a sports car here for 5 bucks. And they kind of give you the 3D version. So again, these are 3D rendered things. Obviously, this is not a fancy one. We've seen some that are extremely fancy. And I think you're not able to see the screen I'm seeing, right? Yeah, I'm not able to um, see it, but let me let me go to that. Uh, let me go to that screen really quick. Here you go. Wow, okay. Um yeah. so this is a Unity asset store and uh, you can buy uh, different uh, things. I think it's because it switched um it switched uh screen as on uh, tabs on me so let me uh let me go back to the sports car go to the asset store one more time and there you go so these are the things that you can buy for your worlds not only worlds but you can buy this for your games if you create a game creator you can go in here and do things we mentioned maybe you want an animal running across your world you pay ten dollars and doing it looks like she's boxing you um, and you can see the whole body moving. <laughs> so um, this is something that, as you can see, prices go down. But you can buy templates. You can buy add-ons, audio uh, applications, 3D virtual effects, things like that. So anything you can think of, you can buy here and add to your worlds. And of course, they do add up. I've bought kit parts, and it ended up being about $200. Worth of it. And most of you that are not believers in the metaverse, Literally, you're throwing your money into here because that's really what it is. Is this a real microphone in front of me? Does it actually work? Can I tap on it? But does it do make any noise? It doesn't. It just looks pretty. And the projector that we're actually working out of is that. It makes it look more authentic when we're having a studio like we're in right now versus flat screen with nothing, our walls or nothing in Activity is very powerful in the world of metaverse. Yeah. Got some final thoughts, Mars? I say when you do, when you do finally join, I mean, 
can definitely check it out with your PC, but if you do end up getting yourself an Oculus, this is such a fun thing to be involved with and you know, at least at least be able to and check out and everything. Yeah. That's a good point. Oh. That's a really, really good point. Yeah. Um, one of the things I wanted to just kind of end with here is obviously following us on YouTube. Uh, our Metalore page is right behind us. Go ahead and subscribe. And as always, you want to ring what, Mars? I want to do what? <laughs> want to ring what? <laughs> you want to ring the little bell? You want to ring the bell. You want to ding, 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 ding. And you want to ring that bell. That way you get notified that. each time that we do uploads for Metalore. That's right. His exactly. does upload. Yeah. But as you can see here, this is our first live direct to YouTube Metalore video. And it check the format, test it out. And next one won't be two hours long like this one, but at least this gives you, you guys <laughs> plenty of information. But even our cameraman is ready to pack it up because that camera is getting hard on his shoulders. Yeah, exactly. Um, all right, I'm Israel Lindo, and you are. I am Marcy Bressler. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk to you on the next one. Sounds good. <laughs>